uh, this is later, later picture. You see, this is a picture of 18th century because you see, uh, natural Cossacks uh, had no, had no. Um, they had horse, but they did not use them uh, in battle. You see. Yes, yes, that's right. They were infantry, but uh, of course they, as army, they of course they needed uh, real, uh, real cavalry. So they invited Crimean Tartars. Ah, for, the, for that purpose, they hired, they hired them. Right, right. And only next, only in later, when in the middle of 17th century, yes, uh, when uh, Ukraine uh, ga uh, gained independence, yes, for the first time from Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. So, uh, in the middle of 17th century, of course, when uh, Ukraine. Uh, became uh, bec uh, became independent. Uh, Hetman of Ukraine, uh, the ruler of Ukraine, of course, he organized uh, organized uh, cavalry okay. from Cossacks. But later, when Ukraine was included in uh, Russian in Great Russian Empire, so Russian Tsar also started to use Cossack Cossacks as army. But uh, he used them only as auxiliary army, not as main uh, force. And he used them as light cavalry only. Only, okay. Only. He refused from Cossacks infantry and uh, used Cossacks only for, um, for different purposes like uh, light cavalry was in that times. Yes. Why did he refuse Cossacks as infantry? Because, because he didn't need because he never believed Cossacks, uh, he recognized them as uh, robbers, as free people, as wild people. Yes. Uh, so he decided he, he, he never believed them. He had his only, his, uh, he had his own powerful army. Oh, of course. Uh, so he used them only, only that, only for that purpose. Is there at the moment in Ukraine lots of uh, momentum to study uh, the history of Cossacks' weapons? Not only weapons, let's say the history of them, the way they lived, what they had, what they cooked, what they, how they dressed, you know? Because I think, may I say so, it's like that Cossacks' history, can I say is an important part of Ukrainian history? Can I say this? Of course, this uh, more more uh, over. I can say that uh, this like the kind of religious here. You see, Cossacks <laughs> <laughs> okay. is like our gods here. <laughs> I try to be politically correct to reformulate, <laughs> and you just you know you, that's what I love you, the way you talk. You know, I try to be politically correct reformulate. You just oh, come by. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Go ahead, please. Tell me about that, yes. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. So it's a very important factor in Ukrainian life at the moment, correct? Yes, yeah, you see, because uh, this is the only... For 300 years, Ukraine was uh, the part of Great Russian Empire. Uh, it was included first in the Russian Empire, then uh, um, when Russian Empire collapsed, uh, just for a few years we got independence and then Russia came again and again. They included us in another kind of empire that now was called Soviet Union. <coughs> and only the memory about Cossacks, about real free people who defended Ukraine in uh, ancient times, so it's... Yes. Um, supported us for all these years. <laughs> even in times, even in the uh, 19th century, yes. uh, first struggle to, for independence uh, of Ukraine or also related to my, with memory of Cossacks. And you see Soviet Union, in times of totalitarianism, they tried to completely destroy this memory, you see. Yes, and uh, the history was completely, completely transformed into Soviet history. It's uh, another long story, but you see, since uh, we got independence, uh, of course, uh, first historical studies, 
was about Cossacks, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's right. This is important for national identity. I mean, for every country, of course, we see this uh, worldwide, you know, for many countries and people around the world, um, a part of the history which they can fall back onto and help them to recognize themselves as a nation or nationhood uh, or as people is extremely important. That's why I think your work as when you do an important part regarding uh, uh, the weapon and weapons of Cossacks is extremely important from this part, also for history of Ukraine, for your country and for your culture, of course, that's uh, no doubt about that. Uh, just one question, you know, I mean, uh, if you wish, and I really, I'm sure this video, many people are going to like it and we are going to have more videos, right? Uh, if you wish and you have time to share with us. Yeah. And just a question for you, what kind of armor did they, okay, maybe, or did they use armor? Okay, I know when, uh, when uh, firearms were there, I mean, armor was obsolete and no one used it anymore. But before that time, do you have any findings on what, it, whether they used any type of armor, the Cossacks? Ah, you see, it's another long, uh, lo another long story because it's not uh, very simple to answer this question in two words. Uh, actually, um, the traditional view that uh, Cossacks did not use armor, did not use any armor, but uh, in fact, of course, they did. Uh, because you see, especially in uh, late 16th century and the beginning of 17th century, yes, because uh, they were part of uh, um, Polish army, not Polish, but uh, the army of Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Yes, you see, uh, in that times when uh, Europe, when Europe uh, almost completely refused. Uh, from heavy cavalry, almost refused from heavy cavalry. So in uh, Poland, uh, it was uh, almost uh, maybe one state in all Europe that that uh, continue to use very heavy cavalry, like uh, the knights. You see, yes, like they the did. Knights. Fascinating. And uh, this cavalry was very effective. And for instance, uh, during the uprising of Cossacks, uh, Polish king used uh, his army to, uh, to oppress them. And uh, of course, he used this uh, heavy cavalry. And uh, this is one of the reasons why Cossacks uh, also used these uh, fortified camps of wagons because uh, they can uh, protect themselves from this uh, heavy cavalry. Ah, that's yeah. right, of course. And uh, this heavy cavalry, it had armor, very powerful armor. Yes. Uh, not medieval armor, of course, but they had uh, kiras, kiras, very powerful kiras, and uh, helmets as well. Yes. Uh, and uh, chain mail very, very often. Uh, so uh, I think that many, uh, many hired Cossacks who served in Polish army, they also had such army, uh, mail, uh, of course they had, and helmets. Uh, but uh, you see the traditional view that uh, Cossacks uh, fought uh, just uh, almost naked, you see, <laughs> like a wild people. <laughs> <laughs> this common, common, very common, very popular point of view. Yes, uh, but it's uh, not true. It's not true, of course. Of course, this is also you know you never know you know I mean this is one aspect of it is like heroic aspect, right? And one aspect of it is also from the other side when they try to belittle other people, right? So you one needs to take it with a pinch of salt, right? You know, I remember when, okay, now I'm, he's going to watch it, so, but pos okay, I can mention it. You know, he was telling me, uh, Manusha said, yeah. I mean, he was not a weapon researcher, so one, it's okay. I mean, he, you know, he was, his area of research was something else. This is about what politics back then, right? And he told me, do you know during Safavid period, saying, yeah, people were very brave. 
again, people, some of them are brave, some of them aren't, but it's not only <laughs> during Safavid period, it's everywhere, every country. But he was, you know, a bit, how can I say it, a bit proud, right? And he said, oh, man, during that time, I don't know if you know that. And I looked at him, what do you mean? They had one-sided armor. And I said, what do you mean they had one-sided armor? They had only, listen now, Dennis, they only protected the front. I said, mm -hmm. yeah. So they didn't protect uh, the ah, back. Not, not to show enemy your back, you see. Exactly. And <laughs> I looked at him and I said, uh, because he was Persian, right? He's Iranian. I said, ah, oh, so you mean they used three, uh, they, said, they used se'ayne. No, I just mix up English and Persian. Se'ayne. I said, mm -hmm. because se means three in Persian. Char means four. Four ayne, four mirrors. So mm -hmm. one was missing. And he said, yes, yes, they were using se'ayne. I said, Sainé doesn't even exist. I've never seen that anywhere. <laughs> 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 he flushed and he said, what do you mean? Do you think he said, well, I have seen, handled many in Iranian museums and I've seen many miniatures, but I've never seen anyone using Sainé. And also there is no historical record of Sainé. There's always Charainé. <laughs> the bank was also protected. You see, and then these type of things that I realized so many people were repeating this story. And I said, guys, stop saying it because it doesn't even make sense. Why shouldn't you protect your back? <laughs> In Ukraine, it's the same story, you see, absolutely the same story because now people who represent themselves as Cossacks and who try to represent martial arts, they always fight uh, without, uh, with uh, naked, Torso, you see. Yes, that's right. <laughs> this is mm. yes. <laughs> because the body protects much better that's than armor. <laughs> yes, brave and um, <laughs> and oh. skin and yes. Yes, that's I understand. <laughs> so <laughs> very stone skin, you see, stone skin. <laughs> like, yes, that's right. Hardened on fire, <laughs> like in computer games. <laughs> yes. It's another story because uh, here in Ukraine we have very special, very special ideas, very popular ideas that uh, part of this Cossacks uh, where uh, we have special word for this, Charakternik. Charakternik, it's uh, like a wizard, like a wizard. That uh, every, every squad of Cossack uh, had their personal wizard. Uh, who uh, turned their skin, their skin to stone skin? <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is like and, uh, cast a spell on bullets and so on. You see, stop uh -huh. bullets in the air. God, yeah, of course. All superstitions are everywhere, right? Of course. Thank and you. For, yes. It was most fun that many people now who try to, to recreate this martial arts of Cossacks, they also try to, to study this uh, wizard things, you see. Are you serious? Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I didn't know that, okay. <laughs> so spelling magic so they could do something with magic. Okay, I understand. Very interesting, <laughs> very interesting. Thank you very much, Dennis. It was uh, lovely. And uh, we are going to continue our discussions. Maybe next time we are going to discuss about the different types of weapons so we can use your knowledge on weapons from Ukraine. So then uh, our, read our viewers are going to get to know more about the history of Ukraine, the, uh, different weapons. Maybe we can concentrate in each session on a certain type of weapon and you can con contribute. And, our, and you have also very beautiful books. And then even if people don't, understand it now because they're going to be translated one day they can you know i have both of books of dennis very wonderful right so they could make use of it okay dennis then i wish you a nice day and i'm going then uh, to stop this and thank you very much thank you thank you and uh, hope to see you next time very thank soon, you very soon i hope thank you